Less than 100 years ago, the most common causes of death throughout the world were infectious or communicable diseases like TB, smallpox or measles. But all that changed thanks to better hygiene, healthcare, vaccinations and antibiotics. Now, in the 21st century, we're told one of the greatest threats to world health is the rise of what are called non-communicable diseases, or NCDs for short. NCDs are considered so important that in 2011, the United Nations called a special meeting to discuss them. One of the people representing New Zealand at that meeting was the Chief Science Advisor to our Prime Minister and distinguished medical researcher, Professor Sir Peter Gluckman. Hi, I'm Hannah Burgess and I've come to the Liggins Institute to talk to Professor Gluckman about NCDs and ask why we should be worried about them. Well, non-communicable disease is a word that covers many diseases. All diseases are not infectious diseases. The major clusters are cancer, heart disease, diabetes, allergy, Alzheimer's disease. The area that we're particularly focused on are those associated with lifestyle. So they include obesity, heart disease, diabetes. And why should we be worried about them? Well, 70% of the world die, of people die from non-communicable disease. And in some populations, such as our Maori and Pacifica people, the incidence of non-communicable disease is very high. By their very nature, the way we live our lives can influence our likelihood of getting them. What we now know is these diseases start very early in life, when we learn, our brains learn about how much to eat, what to eat, how to eat, and our metabolism learns how to be appropriate for the world we're going to grow up in. What we're now learning is a lot of that is not voluntarily determined, but is in fact biologically determined by the way our children grow up. And therefore, that's where we can intervene easiest. What could my generation do to reduce this problem for ourselves and the next generation? The most important thing is to break the cycle of bad eating habits. We need to understand that when we eat inappropriately, we're more likely to get fat. And when we're more likely to get fat, we're more likely to get heart disease and diabetes. And we may not even realize we're fat. Just because we don't look fat, that doesn't mean we doesn't, don't have fat inappropriately inside our body in places where it can do harm. What we know is that if women are in good nutritional state when they get pregnant, if they breastfeed their children, and then if they teach healthy eating and exercise habits to the children, the next generation is more likely to grow up with a lower risk of non-communicable diseases. And this has got biological rather than just behavioral bases to it. That's why diet and exercise don't work so well in adults because we've already had our bodies hardwired for a different set of behaviours. Well, that gives me a lot to think about. What I do now can not only affect my health, but also the health of my children and their children, my grandchildren.